Now, the Court of Appeal sitting in Oweri, Imo State Capital, has sacked Emeka Atuma as the candidate of All Progressives Congress for the Abia Central Senatorial Race. The court maintained that Sam Onibo was the duly elected candidate of the party, having participated in the party's primaries, as well as purchased the party's nomination and expression of interest forms. By this development, the appeal court sets aside an earlier judgment of the Federal High Court in Umahia, which declared Atuma winner of the primary election for that senatorial district. Now, Sam Onubo, the acclaimed winner of that primary election, joins us now. Good day, sir. I hope you're able to hear me now. Yes, I can hear you clearly. Okay, wonderful. Now, let's get straight into it. I'd love your insight into what you feel was the, the, the real cause of uh, uh, Emeka Atuma being awarded this candidate ticket, uh, this candidacy in the, in the onset, what actually transpired behind the scenes? Well, uh, <clears throat> thank you. I, I do not know what they were thinking, actually, because Emeka Atuma contested for governorship on the 26th of May with uh, Chief uh, Ikeche Menike, and he lost. And uh, between the 26th, 27th, 28th, he was busy celebrating that he was the candidate of the party as the gubernatorial candidate because he said the court, you know, my, had disqualified Chief uh, Ikeche Menike. So it was a surprise to me, a bizarre development, to now see him some days later start laying claim to the senatorial ticket which he never participated in the primaries, or even in the processes leading to the primaries. He did not buy forms. He did not do screening. He didn't do screening with us. And uh, he was not there at the election, you know, because during the election, the primary election, it was just two of us, myself and Chief Enrico. But those who were cleared to, you know, contest for that position were four in number. Senator Nkechimwogo and Chief Casey Obaja, and then myself and Chief Enrico. But it just, it turned out that on the eve of the election, which was the 27th of May, Senator Nkechimwogo withdrew in writing and said she was no longer going to participate. Then the other gentleman, Chief Casey Obaja, could not make it to the venue because he was seriously ill. And unfortunately, that sickness killed him. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. So it was just myself, and Chief Enrico. And I defeated Chief Enrico. And somewhere down the line, Chief Enrico was appointed a minister of the Federal Republic. He's today the Minister of State, Science and Technology in the Federal Cabinet. So I was alone. Then suddenly, Emeka Atuma came like a known flying object and said, oh, he, he was laying claim to the senatorial candidate, which he never participated in. And that's how he moved on and up and down and took me to uh, six courts contesting for something he never participated in. So the Court of Appeal order was perfectly in order in finding out that he never participated in the primaries and therefore could not come up to say he's a candidate of the party. So that, I think uh, maybe something happened behind which I was not privy to. Nobody told me why he was uh, prancing around. Uh, very good, uh, Mr. Henry. Uh, so you've already answered the question. It's a very bizarre scenario there. but. Uh, what was the party's oh. reaction to the fact that uh, someone didn't take part in a primary and yet he's been uh, declared winner? So what was the APC's reaction to that scenario before uh, the series of litigations that you had to go through? Well, what happened was that after the primary elections, the team that came to do the primary elections submitted their results on the 6th of June, when we were all getting ready for the national convention, during which we elected our presidential candidate, Senator Bola Ahmed uh, uh, Tinubu. And um, on the 7th, everyone, you know, was at the Eagle Square. Anyone that had, had something to do with the party, either as a, dele a national delegate or whatever, for the participation, you know, for the uh, national convention. However, it is also further curious to know that it was on that seventh that they said they went over to hold a primary election that never happened. 
So all the papers they submitted, everything there was complete forgery. There's none that is supported by, you know, facts. Uh, because some of the people that they use their names to forge those things said they never were there. So I do not know, uh, well, maybe the party at one decision uh, pushed through and said uh, he was going to be a candidate. But that was not justified. And that was not based on any foundation whatsoever. Uh, because the reports of the panel that came to do the primary uh, election for Abia Central Senatorial District was submitted on the 6th. And as we went down the line, I was given the form CO9 to fill. I filled the form. And then on the submission, the date I submitted the form, every other person that was returned, Senator Joseph Carlo, bless him, had signed. And I had to sign that form, which we submitted, three persons in one. And uh, after that, on the 16th, so surprisingly, they said my name was substituted for no just cause. So that was why I went to court. So it's clear that something untoward happened within the party structures. Now, given this background information, how confident are you of the party's support as you now go to election? Oh, no, absolutely conf confident. See, without sounding immodest, by the special grace of God, I am the first person within my federal constituency, that which is Iku and Omar and North and South, to be re-elected since, since 1999. So in terms of being on ground and working with the ordinary people, the people are there, they are ready to work, and they are ready to go ahead and make sure that we are successful in this election. So the party has a choice. The choice is we want to win, and we want to present candidates that is credible, that is dependable, that has verifiable records of performance. So, I mean, the party has a direction to go, which is to ensure that we go ahead and do this election. I do not think that parties go for elections to present candidates that present problems for them, and then at the end of the day, they lose the election. So I have no doubt whatsoever that uh, we'll be working together. Very good, uh, Mr. Anuigo. But I'd like your thought on the implication of this ruling. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, the judiciary is living up to expectation in resolving political disputes within Nigeria? Uh, you know, using your uh, uh, scenario as a case study? I think so. I believe so. And uh, I want to thank the judiciary and, of course, encourage them to continue to live up to their uh, position as the last place for the common man. Because uh, if they had not intervened, I probably would have been in this tussle of moving from one court to the other initiated by the gentleman. He even took me to a court in Castina from Mumuahe. So uh, the judiciary has come in. They have done the right thing. And I want to encourage them. I also want to take this opportunity to uh, commend the President of the Federal Republic for signing the Electoral Act 2022. Because it was based on the provisions of the Electoral Act that we were able to checkmate some of the extreme conduct of some party administrators, not all of them. Because I know that there are some of them who said, look, we should not do something that is wrong, manifestly wrong, and back on journey of naked injustice. Some of them resisted it. But a few of them were pushing something that was wrong. So I want to thank Mr. President for signing the Electoral Act, because if the provisions of this act that checkmate some of the impunity that are easily imported into party administration, if the act has not been passed, assented to by Mr. President, uh, I don't think we'll be where we are today. Perhaps we are going to still see those strange things that happened in the past where one person will run for primary elections, win, and at the end of the day, you see from party uh, hierarchy or party administrators, then they just substitute the name. Uh, I think uh, the Electoral Act has uh, come to help. And I'm happy, without sounding any modest again, to say that Fortunately, I was one of the very last people, one of the 12 people that were nominated or selected at the National Assembly to go and do clause-by-clause -clause consideration of this electoral act with officials from INEC and then the Ministry of Justice. And uh, I thank God that some of the things we did then are now helping to refine uh, the uh, electoral process and help us to deepen and strengthen our democratic practice. 
Now, uh, we've, with just about 80 days to election, I, I would imagine that you've spent the better part of this campaign period uh, fighting this case and uh, trying to secure your, your candidacy. And I wonder what the next 80 days look like for you. It sounds like an uphill battle. And do you think it will be a case of justice delayed being justice denied? Of course, we all know that the courts are working fervently, but they're just overwhelmed with the number of uh, primary, um, the number of cases because of the primary primaries. Uh, is this something that you think might play against you? Oh, well, I am very hopeful. Again, I said with Hassan and Modest, uh, when you get involved in political activities, particularly in representation, you have a duty, an abiding duty, to make sure you work with the grassroots, you work with the people. Yes, we've lost time, but even at that, we we're doing our underground campaign, making sure that we are in touch with our people. There's no doubt that we have lost time. But the good news is that having worked with the people for a very long time in such a way that you are someone that they can reach. Please, let me tell you something. When I ran for to be a member of the House of Reps in 2014, I ran on the acronym of EAR, e -A -R, which stands for effectiveness, accessibility to those who have used the power of their thumbs to elevate you to your Olympian position, and also responsiveness. That's the E-A-R. So, and that's what I have used consistently, to be in touch with the people who have elevated me to this position, and to ensure that I didn't get to Abuja either to develop horns or become inaccessible. So that way, I have no doubt whatsoever. And of course, you need to check the, the, the kind of celebration going on and people you know, coming up. So I'm very hopeful that we'll be able to recover and stay winning. Indeed, uh, Mr. Onigwe, but what advice would you have for other uh, uh, members of uh, you know, the political class who might have gone through uh, you know, the scenarios uh, you've just uh, painted and uh, have been able to survive uh, you know, this series of litigations? Um, I, I think that my advice to them is to remain steadfast and to focus on what they know is right. And when they are opportuned to be you know, um, um, uh, elevated or appointed into positions of authority in party administration, they should not embark on a journey of impunity or naked injustice. Because you know, you do it today and you come back sometime, someday to haunt you. And again, I would advise people to study the Electoral Act 2022 very, very well. Because I think some of them took this plunge into uh, very reckless conduct because they didn't know the contents of the act that it was going to checkmate some of the excesses. So my advice to them is remain steadfast, work well, be in touch with the people you are representing. Do not assume that by being elected you are now uh, the Alpha and Omega. Remain with the grassroots, which we do. And for those who occupy party positions, I will urge them with due respect to please have human heart when they are making some of these terrible decisions. Because actually, this was very, very distracting and very expensive and uh, stressful for anyone. For you to be taken to six course by an individual who never participated in a primary election is bizarre. All right. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that we've spoken about the Electoral Act 2022, and it's exciting to hear that you are a part of it. Now, one of the, uh, the sections of the yes. Electoral Act that, of course, still stands to be tested, and, and we all hope that it will pass the test on Election Day, is the introduction of technology, the use of BVAS and the instant transmission of results and so forth. Uh, let's just zone in on your constituency. We can't speak for the whole nation. Your constituency do you feel that uh, INEC is adequately prepared to be able to do electronic transmission live on the day of elections? Uh, yes, one thing is clear, and that is that we have introduced something that has the potential to help us, you know, deepen and broaden our democratic practice, and that's technology. And of course, I must tell you that during this clause-by-clause -clause consideration, uh, which we used to start by 9.30 in the morning and sometimes close 10 p.m., you know, right here in this building at this Hilton. 
uh, we focused on those things and looked at them thoroughly. But having introduced these things and having tested them, you know, they both have a proverb that use the smell of the fat to know how physics tests. We have used this technology in these states, you know, Anambra, Ekiti, and all that. And they have proven very, very useful. So in my federal constituency, in my senatorial district, it's more of, you know, uh, an area where one, I represent the state capital along with two other local governments in Abia. And then the other part of the senatorial district is part of Aba, you know, where we call Osisioma, coming to Israel and not as out. So these are areas where, to the glory of God, a lot of people there are very well educated. And uh, I'm sure they can fit into this because uh, almost all of them are using their phones and things like that. So I see this working. In summary, I see this working. But we have a duty, just like we are talking about why the sum, sum, a few party administrators engage in something that was, was worrisome. We have a duty as a people to work together to ensure that we work towards the success of this technology that has been introduced by INEC. Of course, if we do that, at the end of the day, I think we'll all be very happy that we are on the right track. After 25 years of unbroken democratic dispensation, we have a duty to ensure that we improve on our democratic process. So I don't have any doubts at all. Indeed, and on that note, uh, Sam Onuibu, uh, candidate of the ABC, IBS Central Senatorial District, I'd like to thank you very much for your time.